Hey, hey, what's up everybody? It's Rutech. Today we'll be talking about the best $700 gaming PC that you can get in 2022. All right, so let's get started. The first part we're going to be taking a look at is the motherboard. In the box, of course, is the motherboard itself, the MSI B560MA Pro, the pretty generic IO shield, and some SATA cables, which we fortunately won't be needing. Same story with the bagged M2 screw, don't need that. And of course the instructions and DVD, don't need that either. So the first step, of course, would be to remove the motherboard from its anti-static bag, and place it directly on top of the motherboard box. And we're doing this because the first part we're gonna install is the processor. So unbox your Intel i5-11400F along with its stock cooler. Now, if you're not too much of a fan of the Intel stock coolers, I do recommend the Arctic Alpine 12, which I will also have linked in the description. But in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to install the stock cooler. So go ahead and very carefully remove the Intel Core i5-11400F out of its plastic case. It's one of those little plastic cases where if you open it too fast, the uh, item inside the plastic case will jump at you. So be very gentle with it. Push down on the CPU retention arm and slide it to the right and then push it up to unlock the CPU retention bracket. Now locate this little circle. This is what you're going to want to match up with the little golden triangle on the Intel chip when it's being installed. All right, now slowly and carefully place the Intel chip in its socket. Give it a little wiggle to make sure it's secured in place and then lower the bracket and arm to lock the CPU in place. And yes, this black plastic piece is supposed to jump out at you. So we've installed the CPU. Now let's move on to the RAM. More specifically, the Team T-Force Vulcan Z 2x8 gigabytes of 3000 megahertz RAM. Push open the RAM retention tabs and then using your thumbs, evenly apply pressure on both sides of the RAM when installing until it clicks into place. RAM is probably one of the easier things to install. Now let's move on to something that's just as easy, the CPU cooler. Luckily with the Intel stock cooler, it's super easy. All you have to do is line up the cooler with the four holes surrounding the processor, and then using preferably your thumbs, push the push pins into place, which will secure the cooler into those four holes. And to verify that you did it right, look at the bottom of the motherboard and make sure that you can see these four white plastic pins sticking out of the bottom. Didn't I tell you it was easy? And of course, let's not forget to plug the CPU cooler cable into to the CPU fan header. Get that cable out from under the fan, I'm not really sure why they package it like that, and then plug it into the CPU fan header, and be careful, it only goes in one way. And there you go, at this point you should have your RAM, CPU, and CPU cooler installed. Now let's move on to the SSD. Remove these two screws from the M2 heatsink, remove the heatsink, take your crucial P2 500GB NVMe SSD, and install it by simply pushing it into its M2 slot. Now at the bottom of that heatsink we just removed should be a sticker which you're going to want to peel off. Then take that heat Sink, put it exactly where you got it from and reinstall it now on top of our NVMe SSD. And that's it for the motherboard for now. Now let's get ready to put it in the case, being the Enermax Marble Shell M MS20 ARGB Micro ATX Mini Tower case. It's a really great case, and I'm actually really surprised how much comes included with it for such a decent low price. Anyway, before we get the motherboard into the case, we first, of course, have to remove the glass side panel. Be very careful, I highly recommend you do this while the case is laying on its side. And while we're at it, we might as well also remove the other side panel, since we'll be doing a lot back there as well. Pull it backwards and then remove it. Now this step is optional, but you can also remove these SSD brackets since we won't be using or needing them. Just make sure you don't toss them in case you ever want to install an external SSD in the future. To make installing the motherboard a little bit easier, I'm also going to remove this exhaust fan. Pretty simple, just loosen and remove these four screws that hold it in place. All right, now for the motherboard installation, starting with the IO shield. The IO shield can be pretty tough to install. It's probably actually my least favorite step when it comes to PC builds. All you really have to do is apply even pressure along the top and the sides until the whole thing is snapped in place and you're able to tap on it without it falling out. To install the motherboard, we're going to have to retrieve the proper screws, which can be found in this box that is enclosed in this hard drive bracket. In 
the box, you'll also find some nice goodies like some zip ties and some Velcro ties. They will definitely come in handy later when you're doing some cable management. And then in this bag is the bag that has all the necessary screws. So now you can take your motherboard, place it into the case, and the best way to align it properly is to make sure that all the I.O. ports line up with the I.O. shield. Now from that bag of screws we were just talking about, you'll find this screw right here, which you'll use to secure the motherboard into place. At the top right of your screen, you can see a guide showing you exactly where to install these screws. Blue means you absolutely need to install that screw, and red means it's optional. Considering the case didn't come with the standoff in that spot, and there's not a lot of weight right there, I'd say it's definitely an optional screw to install. And there you have it, we have a properly installed motherboard. Now let's get to work on the power supply, the Aeros Game AGV 500 watt 80 plus bronze certified supply. In the box are some more zip ties, very cool, the power cable, and of course the power supply itself, which Aeros Game keeps really nice and secure in this bubble wrap. Now it's time to put the power supply in the case. You're going to want to make sure the fan is facing the vent at the bottom when you're installing it. All you really do here is slide it into its housing. Then with the screws that came included with the power supply, you're gonna fasten it on all four corners. So at this point, you're gonna have a huge mess of cables. I'm gonna simplify it. We're gonna separate the cables into two groups, the cables that came with the case and the cables that are coming out of the power supply. So we're gonna start off by plugging in one of the power supply cables, more specifically the ATX power connector. Route it through this cutout right here, and when plugging it in, make sure this tab right here is facing the right side of the motherboard. Now this one takes a little bit of force to plug in, just be careful, slowly apply pressure along the sides of the cable until it's flush with its connector. Here's a bit of a better look, make sure there's no really big noticeable gap between the connector and the cable. And next up, also coming out of the power supply, is the CPU power cable. With the CPU power cable, route it through the top cutout right here, and with the connection tab facing upwards, plug it into the CPU power connector. And once again, here's a closer look, make sure there's no large or noticeable gap. Now we're gonna plug in the two front RGB fans. The ARGB is powered by this SATA connector which comes out of the ARGB hub, as you can see. We'll be connecting this to the SATA power connector which comes out of the power supply. Looks like this. Now when plugging it in, be careful as the connector only goes in one way. Now that the ARGB hub has power, now we need to give power to the fans. We'll be doing this using a chained Molex connector which can be found coming out of the front of the case. Locate the Molex power connector coming out of the power supply, it should look pretty similar, and then go ahead and connect it to the chained Molex connectors which, like I said, come out of the front of the case. And this is how it should look when it's successfully connected. Next up, another cable that came built into the case, the USB 3.0 connector. Route it through this middle cutout right here, and you'll notice there is a little tab on one side, but not on the other. You're going to want to make sure that this tab is facing the left side of the motherboard. Just be extra careful as you don't want to accidentally bend any pins on its header. Next up, another cable that came with the case, the USB 2.0 connector. Should be pretty easy to identify, I hope, and you'll want to route this through the middle bottom cutout. Now, do be extra careful, this only goes in one way, you don't want to accidentally bend the header pins. Take a look at the connector, make sure you know where the blank spot is. And once again, another cable that came with the case, this time the HD audio connector. Obviously, it looks pretty similar to the USB connector. This will route through this bottom right cutout, or left cutout, depending on what side you're looking at. And once again, be careful, be aware of where the blank spot is on this connector. It only goes in one way, don't want any accidentally bent pins. And last but definitely not least, every PC builder's nemesis, the front panel connectors. These will route through the rightermost bottom cutout, and using this diagram from the instructions that came with the motherboard, we can see where exactly to plug these individual connectors in. Now if you want to take the easy way out, you can just only plug in the power switch, as you don't exactly need the other ones for the computer to run. They're simply just LED indicators. And here's how it should look when all is said and done with the front panel connectors. Now for a little bit of cable management, it can be as sloppy or neat as you'd like, just as long as it'll all fit when you put the panel back on. And now for the graphics card, you'll want to loosen this screw and pull back this bracket, and it's finally time to unbox our RX 6500 XT graphics card. Now it's okay if you didn't get this exact RX 6500 XT from PowerColor, the installation process is the exact same for each one, and I'll of course have links for a couple different options in my description. This particular version only has one fan, which believe it or not is more than enough based on my benchmarks. And now remove the top two PCIe brackets 
brackets. Be careful when you're wiggling them out. You don't want to accidentally damage the motherboard. Click open the PCIe retention clip. And now it is time to install the graphics card. Apply a little bit of pressure. And once the PCIe retention clip clicks back up, you'll know you properly installed it. And using the screw that came with the case while holding up the graphics card, fasten the card into place to ensure that it's well supported. And of course, we can't forget to power the card as well. So locate the PCIe power connector, which will be coming out of the power supply, route it through this middle bottom cutout and remove these two pins from the PCIe power connector. If it doesn't budge, try the other one and then plug it into the graphics card with the clip facing downwards. And it should look something like this. Now we're going to, of course, reinstall that fan that we took off quite a few steps ago. Reinstall it with those same four screws that it was originally secured with, and then plug its power connector into the header right next to the CPU fan header labeled System Fan 1. And your PC is built. Once you ensure there are no error codes and it boots up to BIOS, it's time to install Windows and then some drivers. To install Windows, you'll want to get a USB drive that is at least 8GB in size and plug it into another Windows device. And then on that computer, head over to Google, type in Windows 10 ISO and click this Microsoft.com link right here, or just click the link in my description and then click the button that says download tool now. Once the executable file is downloaded, you can go ahead and run it. And when it's done getting things ready, make sure you click accept. Then it'll get even more things ready. And when it's done with that, you'll want to select create installation media and click next. Ensure the addition is Windows 10 and the architecture is 64 bit. Click next and then make sure you have USB flash drive selected. And then of course, select your flash drive. Click next and then it'll start installing Windows 10 onto the flash drive. This could take a pretty long time. So just relax, wait until it installs. And once it does, remove it from your device, plug it into your new PC and boot it up. And when it boots up, it should bring you to this screen. Verify that all the selected information is correct and then click next and then click install now. It will then bring you to this page. Click I don't have a product key as we'll be putting that in later. Select either Windows 10 Home or Pro, it doesn't really matter and then click next. Read absolutely every single word of the applicable notices and license terms three times over and then click accept and then next. Then click custom install windows only, select the only drive that should be displayed and then click next. And now it will install Windows. Once that's finished, it'll restart itself and bring you to the Windows setup prompt, which is pretty simple. I don't think I have to walk you guys through how to put your name and password and all that stuff. And once you get past the setup prompt, you will of course be greeted by the classic Windows desktop, but you shouldn't forget to activate Windows. To do this, it's pretty easy. Just head over to digitalchillmart.com, a really trustworthy website that has some of the best Windows 10 and 11 prices. Choose either Windows 10 Pro or Home, whichever you chose when you were installing Windows 10. And at checkout, be sure to use coupon code RUTEC for a discount. When the activation code is emailed to you, go to the search bar on your new PC, type in activation, click activation settings, and click the button that says either enter product key or change product key. This is where you'll enter the code that you received from digitalchillmart.com. Now that Windows is activated, let's turn on XMP. Restart your computer and spam the delete key until the BIOS screen comes up. Click on advance at the top of your screen or just press F7 on your keyboard click on overclocking settings and enable extreme memory profiling. Then click the X on the top right corner and then click yes. And lastly, the drivers. I'll have the links to all of the necessary drivers in my description. Just go ahead and download those, follow the prompts. They should be pretty self-explanatory. And if you run into any problems, be sure to leave a comment or join my Discord. Link is in the pinned comment and ask for some help. And lastly, 1080p benchmarks. Let's see how this PC performs when put up against modern games running at 1080p in various graphic settings. For the rest of this segment, I'll just play some nice soothing music so you can enjoy the benchmarks with no commentary. I'll see you guys in the outro.
And that'll wrap it up for most of today's video. Just one quick thing I forgot to mention. If you wanna change the colors for the fans with this PC, all you have to do is press the reset button to cycle through the different options. If you enjoy the video, drop a like. Have any comments or questions, drop a comment below. And if you enjoy the content you're seeing, like to see PC-related content, consider subscribing. Thanks for watching. Peace out.